Good. Uh, are we on? Yep. If you could uh, make sure your phones are off, please. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to the September 28, 2021, uh, regular meeting of the Barefoot Bay Recre Board of Trustees, Barefoot Bay Recreation District. Uh, we'll start our meeting as we normally do, a thought for the day. And of course, we have to go back to the headlines and the COVID and all of the people that are ill. And so we'll just take a pause for a moment and remember all of our our our, our healthcare workers and our people, our rescue workers who are doing their best to defeat this um, deadly disease. Thank you. Um, Mr. Morrissey, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Mr. Gruno, would you please uh, take the roll call? Mr. Nugent. Present. Myself, present. Mr. Morrissey. Present. Mr. Amos. Present. Chairman Mino. Present. We also have with us our community manager, John Coffey, our district clerk, Stephanie Brown, and our council, uh, Clifford Refringers. I did not see anybody else out there. No. We do have a quorum. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, for our audience, if you... Uh, planning on speaking in audience participation, we'd appreciate it if you'd fill out a little note there so we know who you are, have it for the record. You don't have to, but again, it just helps us to remember who said what. Um, agenda, are there any additions, deletions to the agenda, gentlemen? Hearing none, uh, the agenda will stand as it is. We'll deal with that in an, as an item later. Um, presentation and proclamations, I do not believe we have any. Uh, approval of the minutes. Uh, Mr. Gruner, we have uh, minutes dated September 10th, 2021. Move to approve. Any discussion, comments, changes, deletions, additions? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Treasurer's report. Uh, Mr. Nugent. Yes, cash balances in the general fund as of 920, 2500. Operating cash in the banks, the MB&T operating account, has $314,708.67. The MB&T money market account has $1,350,681.90. The SBA reserve account has $699,810.67. Total interest bearing accounts, $2 million. $50,492.57. Total cash balances in the general fund, $2,367,701.24. Our daily deposits have been $55,852.63. So total deposits received, $55,852.63. And Mr. Chairman, I'm going to deviate a little bit from the norm, and that is I'm not going to detail all of the expenditures over 5000 but I've been reminded that a full copy of this is available for the public to pick up. Mm -hmm. So expenditures 92 to 920, total expenditures 5000 and above is $368,878.67. Expenditures under $5,000, $70,536.02 for the total expenditures of $439,414.69. That is the Treasury report. Thank you, sir. And, and just to remind people that um, we have uh, duties as trustees to go through bills. We have a trustee who goes through all bills before they are paid and signed. So it's not something that we are... Uh, not paying attention to, believe me. Um, you heard the treasurer's report. Um, can we have a motion to approve the report as presented and approve bills, please? Mr. Amos made a motion. Is there a second? Mr. Gruno seconded. Did comments, discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. 
Uh, audience participation, uh, we have Mr. LePage. And Dick, when you come up, please give your address so we have it for the record. Barefoot Bay, 1037 Royal Palm. I see part of it here is this, um, the COVID precautions. Well, you got somebody up here that was vaccinated, followed all the precautions and ended up getting it. And I'll tell you, you do not want to have it. It is not pleasant. Uh, I recommend anybody that gets some symptoms go to a doctor. Now me, I happen to be lucky. I was up in Georgia at the time and my daughter knew a virologist, an MD. And uh, you hear that first thing, you go in there and he says, well, the bad news is you got to COVID. I don't know if it's Delta variant, we can't test, but you do have COVID. But the good news is I'm gonna treat you aggressively. Well, they put me on what was called uh, ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine. Now this don't cure a virus. We've never cured a virus in the history of our country, but it produces antibodies in you. And I fought it off, but nobody's ever coughed like that. I'd walk three doors down and a lung would fall out of me, and I'd push it back in my mouth. So just uh, really be cautious about this thing, even if you've been vaccinated. It's serious. If you walk by somebody that's had it and they cough on you, chances are you could get it. So thanks a lot for listening on that. Thank you, sir. We're glad you're well. Oh, yeah. um, any other audience participation? Hearing none, audience participation is closed. Um, unfinished business. Uh, let's discuss COVID precautions. Mr. Coffey. Aren't we there? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, at the last meeting, uh, we announced a temporary 30 day one rider per cart rule at the golf course. It's been well received by the members and players. Um, there are um, quite a few folks who still ride double to a cart. You know, they may live together or close friends, that's their choice. Um, at this time, we believe um, our precautions we're taking, which we uh, are fumigating. Uh, with a fogging machine, each assembly room, the uh, food and beverage uh, buildings every night, that our precautions are reasonable. Uh, if the board would like to discuss further ones, um, I will point out um, starting next week, we're starting a music bingo back up in building A. Um, we anticipate a full house. Um, that's not to say everyone who wants to be there will be there because in the past we've all we've almost always in the summer reached capacity and had to turn people away so if there are folks who are concerned about being in a room in building a with 200 people you know we respect their um, decision not to come but we anticipate a full crowd of folks and i would imagine based on what i see out in the community that quite a few of them will have face coverings on and some won't uh, but we recommend staying the course. You know, one of the one of the bad things about this disease is, of course, it scares you. And like like Mr. Page said, you know, you don't want to have it, and you're and you want to do everything you can to not to get it. And it's unfortunate because just the other day I was playing golf, not riding with someone in the cart, but they were in another cart, and that person coughed the entire time around the golf course. Now, probably had sinus problem, probably had a cold, something, because I haven't heard they had COVID. But I was over there putting the mask on on the golf course. I was doing everything just because it scared me. And I thought, good God, I don't need to get this, you know. Um, so it does, it is, it is a scary thing. I guess my concern is the fact that we're starting to do a lot more things inside. And I guess music bingo does not lend itself to outside. But... Uh, I just think we need to be careful with the inside activities. And I believe um, we had the issue the other day that uh, clubs, um, they can, the clubs who meet, and whatever, they can make their own regulations or whatever they want to do for their meetings, correct? C correct. Um, our long custom is if a club or a resident or an outside person who pays a fee reserves one of the, our rooms, they can control access. They control what happens in the room. 
Um, now, clearly, we don't allow discriminatory practices, but in the past, there's been some social clubs that prohibited renters from coming in the building. Um, clubs have had ticketed events where they prohibit people. There is a club event coming up in uh, the next few weeks where they're going to require facial coverings. That's not a BBRD requirement, but it's one that they're going to uh, require. So. Uh, the clubs are free to do how they want. Um, you know, just to touch on uh, Trustee Gruneau's comments, um, uh, karaoke, which has been on Thursday nights outside, we are going to maintain that outside as much as possible. Um, part of that is uh, I, I agree with Trustee Gruneau that people feel safer outside, but we've had much larger audiences for the outside karaoke than we ever had for the capacity inside the lounge. So I think it makes good business sense for us and also good health sense to keep things outside as much as possible. Any other comments, questions? Any other suggestions? I think we're fine for now. I'm sorry, Mr. Amos, go ahead. Yeah, I think now that we're doing a lot more inside, I think we need to make sure special care that our air conditioning units, air handling units are up to par. Like we don't have anyone shut down and we still have people coming in and uh, maybe check the air filters a little more frequently. And that, that goes a long way. As long as you have a good ventilation, it, that's much better. Thanks. Thank you. Any other? Okay. Um, next item, uh, 8B, Steward Medical Group. Uh, so tell us what's going on again here now. Either one. We're, yeah. we're going to ask that you table... Um, one more time to the 8th, October 8th, I did receive a communication today from uh, Stewart's lawyers um, that is relatively positive. Um, the, and I can read the email to you. This is from their deputy general counsel. Said that um, I have reviewed the lease and only have a few comments which I believe will not be objectionable. If you believe it's in everyone's best interest to table the item until the next meeting, I do not object. So um, probably a good idea to just table to the next meeting so we can get those comments, but it looks like we're moving in the right direction and they're, and okay. they're not going to have major objection. So is, I would recommend that you do that. Okay. Is there a mo uh, mo motion to accept the recommendation to table this item until October 8th? Move the table. Uh, second, please. Mr. Nugent seconded. All those in favor? All right. I'm sorry. Comments? Questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Um, rules for the BOT. Uh, amendment to the rules. John, do you want to do this or should I do it? Or I can introduce it. There's, there's a resolution Mr. Reppinger will read uh, before a motion's made. But... Um, as most folks who watch these meetings at home or in person know, uh, Chairman Mino has requested previously to amend the order of business for regular BOT meetings to add addition or deletion to the agenda and approval of the agenda. Uh, adoption of this resolution will accom accompany that. And, and again, just to add that, that it's standard practice in most, in most meetings. Um, you can add or delete items from the agenda before you ever get into the full blown of the meeting. And it just makes it easier sometimes. Um, once it is, then you approve the agenda and on you go. So all we're doing is nothing great. It simply puts it on the agenda page that we will uh, automatically ask for any additions or deletions and then say, if not, the pr approve the agenda as presented. Would you read the resolution, please? Resolution 2021-16, a resolution of the Barefoot Bay Recreation District amending and adopting a revised set of rules for the Board of Trustees, providing for severability, providing for conflict with other provisions, and providing an effective date. Uh, can I have a motion to approve this recommendation? Mr. Nugent, second. Mr. Morrissey, did you second? Mr. Morrissey, second it. Comments, questions? Yes, sir. Just a little housekeeping item. I know we're in there to change the additions and deletions and approval of the agenda, but can we make the editorial change and take out Barefoot Bay Homeowners Association? What? In the current uh, 
document, it says uh, Barefoot Bay Homeowners oh, Association. Oh, okay. That's bad. He's reading everything now. That's <laughs> appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments, questions? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, ADA lifts. Mr. Coffey. I believe you have an, an additional item on your table. If anybody reviewed the agenda ahead of time, what's on the screen and uh, given to the trustees is a revised memo. Um, initially, um, long story short, um, uh, a, a long ago opinion from Mr. Reppinger is that we need ADA lifts at all three pools. The pool one lift is um, due to the inability to get replacement parts and the frequency of the needs, we began searching earlier this year for a replacement. And when we uh, checked with Cliff about an issue related to that, that's where uh, this opinion came back up. So we revised our request to our pool services contractor who gave us a, a, a bid that uh, set a lot of people back when they first saw it of approximately $43,000. And that was for installation of three lifts at the three pools. Um, in looking for uh, alternate pricing, um, one slightly under 16000 plus the cost of permitting and an electrician to install the grounding uh, was located. And um, that is this right here, very uh, bulletized um, bid, but um, Mr. Getz and Trustee Amos have met with the gentleman and they feel confident that his equipment is very comparable in nature and will do the work and he's done a lot of sales throughout uh, Florida on that. The, the one thing that I did brief the tr trustees on earlier in the day via email is the final cost is unknown because we have to get an electrician to pull the permit and install the grounding. Um, that does get us potentially into a he said, she said, if there's any issues, we hope that there's not, and we don't exactly know what the final cost is. We don't think it'll be that extravagant. Considering the savings over the family pools quote, we believe it's worth um, going with pool lift specialists. There is sufficient fund balance um, or contingency in the FY22 budget to fund this project Therefore, staff recommends the BOT approve the $15,867,000 proposal from pool lift specialists for installation of ADA pool lifts at all three pools and instruct staff to include the cost in a future budget amendment. Thank you. Uh, we'll get in discussion. Is there a motion to accept the recommendation? Mr. Morrissey, accept it? Oh, wait. We need a motion first. In, we, make your motion. Is there a second? Mr. Gruno, yes. Uh, discussion. Mr. Morrissey. Hello? Yep. Hello? Yep. Got it? Okay. The only problem I have with this is looking back over the, the times that we've had construction work here in the Bay, and I think one of the things that's going to come up on the, uh, for the 13th time, Building A, uh, when we don't know the exact price and what they're exactly doing, we get these uh, little increases along the way which I don't like, okay? 13 times is kind of a lot of one building, but now you're leaving it open for perhaps uh, the same thing's gonna happen here. It may not be as bad, but it's gonna be, they haven't done it yet, they didn't open anything up, so they're giving you an estimate. Okay, fine. But we don't have an estimate for the electrical. I don't think we should pr proceed until we get that. Because there may be more. It, it, okay, Mr. Nugent. Would it be appropriate for us to approve, based on staff recommendation, from pool lift specialist, and have a separate agenda item for the approval of the electricity under a separate agenda? Well, it would almost have to be, that would end up being that no matter what, wouldn't it? It has to be worded a little different. Yeah, we could bring it back. The issue is, 
you're not going to get a solid proposal until you get the equipment on site for the electrician to look at and understand what the work he has to do. Um, what was there, uh, Mr. Amos and, and Matt, well, Matt's not here, what, or, 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 or Mr. Coffey, too. I mean, we're talking a difference here between, uh, what, 20, 30, almost, tw almost 40 some thousand. I mean, are we talking about an electrician going to be anything like that? Do we? Really? So do we have to run 110 volts out to it or is this grounding? The, the, this is grounding work and permitting. Uh, these are battery operated units. Um, the grounding is because you got the battery, the, l the electricity from the battery close to the pool. Um, I don't anticipate the electrician's cost being that substantial. The last thing I want to do is try to guess what it is because, you know, the community we live in would love to uh, say I don't know what I'm talking about when I'm off on that. But um, I do not think it's substantial. Uh, I would be shocked if, it, if the total cost of this came anywhere close to 20000 uh, The comparison is 43000 and that's where... Yeah. Um, I, I do not like having multiple vendors on a project, but I can't sit here in good conscience um, being a steward of the people's money and say, let's spend, you know, uh, close to $30,000 more for a sure number versus a uh, wiggle room of a much less number. So we're talking a difference of, what, twenty almost $28,000 here, correct? Yeah, oh, savings plus twenty eight thousand dollars plus, plus the, the permits, right? Plus the permits. No, I'm, I'm saying between the proposal we were going to accept for forty two seven ninety five and this one for fifteen eighty seven, there's a difference of twenty eight thousand uh, dollars. I'm just going back to the former one. You know, is an electrician and permits going to cost us twenty eight thousand dollars? I, I that's just, my question. I just don't like you know not yeah. knowing and yeah, I understand. Yeah, you know, um, is it a lot of things come back all the time here. Is it Lately, is it possible do, to get an anything estimate? Anything debate does. There's always you know extra money. Yeah. Is it is it possible to get an estimate from? I mean, I, estimates are estimates. You can't hold them to it. I don't know. Well, you get a general idea here anyway. Go ahead, Mr. Nugent. I think the bottom line is that we're required to be ADA compliant. It's requirement for all three pools. So I think at this point the safest to go with the fifteen eight and then deal with the price of the electrician once the product gets on site. I was going to suggest go with the 15867 and cap it at 20,000 before it's got to come back to the board. That's reasonable. Yeah, one one of the, I was involved with it we had the um, the installer and the company out here. We went over and we looked at pool one, and I took him over to pool three, which is the same as pool two. And he doesn't see any any problems, but it has to go through the electrician for the grounding portion. And uh, Matt had explained to him we just did some kind of bonding through the pools. So it's like the grounding's there. They just have to hook into it from where that is. So he doesn't, well, of course, you know, he's, he's not us. He's, but he doesn't expect it to be a whole lot of money, you know, as, as for an electrician. And he said, just get an electrician and get him to give you an estimate. And if we can find an, an electrician, but get him out here and see if we can get an estimate from him. But I kind of go along with uh, Jim's. I mean, we'd set on a specific amount of money, and then if it's going to go over that, then we'll have to revisit that to, to okay it. Um, the only other thing that I would like to put in, in there, and, and now that we're doing that, is uh, leave it up to Matt. Right now they have the Scout XL. There's two of those, and they're needed for pool two and three. What they are is they have a, a, a higher base on them. They also can rotate 360 degrees, so it makes it easier to get in for anybody, and they can go up and down on dry land as well as rotate around and go into the water at any level. It's a much, much better unit than the, the Ranger. The reason he said about the Ranger is because it's cheaper and it would work on pool one, but it's not flexible. 
it sits on the edge of the pool. You have to get in it where it sits, and it goes out over the water, and it goes down. There's no changing in levels. If a guy, say, he's missing his left arm, he's not going to get in that chair. You can't rotate it around so he can get in the other side. So my suggestion was it's, <laughs> it's really, to me, not that much money compared to the amount of money we're saving. This is the exact same lift, the Scout XL, for 47.09 from this vendor that the other vendor was going to charge us over $8,000 for. So I would like to talk to Matt and get his opinion to see if we should just go with three Scout Excel, period. It might also be easier if it ever comes to a maintenance or anything because you have the same piece of equipment in all three pools instead of different pools. And on the way I look at it, pool one would probably get more use out of a, a handicap lift than the other pools because I, you know, it's easier access to the pool and uh, people like to go to that one more. So, yeah, I, I would like to go along with what Jim said, but I would like to make it maybe 25,000. And I really believe they could bring this thing in under that. So, because it, uh, from what he was saying, the electrician, though, he's, it, if he has to dig a little teeny trench next to the pool and put this ground wire on it and then put cement on it, that's it. It's not like they have to dig the, the whole area up and put all this grounding system in. The grounding system's already in. So you're looking at 25,000? Yeah. Just, just we'll to see. reiterate, uh, Mr. Coffee has discretionary spending up to 15,000. So if we go forward with the bid at 15,8, and the work comes in at 12,2, John has the approval to be able to go and set that further into motion without needing another agenda. What, what bid? I, I, you're kind of losing me. There is currently a quote for 15867 right. Okay. We go forward with that. Yep. When the electrician comes in with the bid to put in the grounding system, John has discretionary spending up to $15,000. So if it comes in for twelve thousand, we're not going to have to wait until the October eighth BOT meeting to approve. John can just go ahead and approve it. And you still have it for twenty seven. Yes, it's split. He's going to split out the electrical from the the actual hardware. I'm sorry. Yeah. Split out the electrical. Well, it will be. I mean, it's a separate bill. I guess the the thing is, is that whether it's fifteen or twenty or twenty five, I mean, uh, we're going to put it in. As John said, we're going to get it in there and. The alternative is is to take a bid for $42,000. So we don't think it's going to be more than that. I understand what Mr. Morrissey is saying, and I agree completely in un unknown numbers of what it will cost. But you have to remember, the other side is you go with a bid of $42,000. Well, I think I'd much rather go with the fifteen eight and see what the electrical, electrical <coughs> is going to cost to do it. Now, you can, and, and I don't think it's a problem, Mr. Coffey, right? If you want to set it, say, well, we'll... We will pass a motion as long as the electrical is not more than twenty thousand or something like that. I don't think there's a problem with that. It all depends how you want to amend the motion. You can either do the we have a motion right now to accept the bid as it is and it's simply that. Or you can do an amendment to that motion and put some other stipulation on what the electrical would be. Why cheap out at pool one? I'm sorry? I said let's not cheap out at pool one. Let's do it right. Uh, we have people with limited mobility. That's going to be very tough to get into if that chair doesn't swivel. And you're right, all three of the same variety, easier maintenance. And then when we move pool techs around, they're all working with the same product. You know, it's like Southwest Airlines. All the pilots fly all the planes because they're alike. So what I would recommend is uh, the motion be amended that we go with three Scout Excels, all three pools are alike, and then... Um, allow uh, John to take care of the electrician. Steph, do you know what we're talking about? I have no idea. We're looking for a clarification on the motion. It is. It's, we're looking to amend the motion. How are you going to amend, amend the motion? It. The motion maker would amend the motion if you want to, or you can withdraw it and have somebody make a, a, a new motion. 
Mr. Grinnell, you can just amend the motion if you want, to whatever way you want. Well, who made the, ori the original was made by Miss. I don't think who? I made the original. Who? Mr. Morrissey made it. Oh, Mr. I'm sorry. Morrissey, Morrissey made, made, made the original. original. I'm sorry. Yes, sir, did. Yeah. Let, let's amend it. Uh, okay. And how do we want to amend it? Give, 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 give Mr. Morrissey 25. an idea of what you want, 25, and then he can say. 25. What's that? Yeah, 25,000. <clears throat> yeah, that doesn't help. We're still not clear. Can, wait, wait, can, you I, can I take a stab at it, Mr. Chairman? I, I think the intent of the board is to award contract um, for three um, Scout Excel models. Did you change that one? and a combined project cost not to exceed $25,000. We would need Is that to, we would need to get a revised bid from the vendor. Uh, you had that. Well, the bid is for two scout and one ranger. Well, you had the first bid you sent you. Oh. the revised one if you wanted the ranger. Oh. The first yeah. bid you sent you was 17 whatever we have. We don't have that. We don't have No, two scouts and one ranger. That's what this one is. The original, original. the original invoice was for three scouts, and it was at seventeen thousand. And he didn't bring that. That's the other one. Insulation. No, this. See, this no, one's no, two, and this is one. About, right? right. The original. There's another invoice, and it was the first one sent, and it was for three scouts. But we had talked to him about possibly getting the ranger, so they sent this invoice also. So it's like, which invoice do you want to? Okay, just hold on. Right, okay, so, so we, I, we don't have. Can we, we find that, John? Or I might yeah, have it. Yeah, I can't put it up on the screen. No, we don't have it but for us to look at either. The, so. the three, the, the first bid was three scouts right. and installation for $17,127. It was for three? That's for three of us. That's what I said. It was only. Uh, okay, so let's just. Okay, hold on. So we're, the bid is seventeen thousand one hundred twenty-seven thousand, and that's for three of the same kind of chair you're talking about, correct? Yeah. Okay. So we would like to amend the motion to state that we will accept the bid up to of uh, for three of these whatever the chairs are, whatever they are, for a total bid of seventeen thousand one hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars. Is that possible? It's 17000 for the hardware and then the installation of the grounding system by the electrician. Yeah, that's all different. That's not part of their bid, no. That's not part of their bid. Are they going to, uh, John, are they going to give us a price for the electrician or is that something we have to do separately? We have to acquire the electrician independently. Right, so we can't really lump it all together unless we had a maximum amount for the project. Correct. So put a $25,000 max on it and well, make it, it so. I understand your. Oh. Oh, Miss Ch Chairman, yes, sir. It, it might be easier to instead of trying to uh, word craft a single motion, uh, have one motion for award of contract and a second motion dealing with the installation costs. Exactly. That, that's what I was going to say. I, you can't really tie these two together. You're either accepting this bid that they have, and then we deal with the other because they're not providing the electrical. The other side of this is if you say an emotion that you're going to approve this bid and then do electrical and, and installation up to $8,000, which would bring you up to the $25,000, what are you going to do if it's more than that? I mean, I mean, you're, you're either going to put this thing in and you're going to do it for less than $42,000, which is the original bid, or you're not going to do it. So... 
Go ahead, Mr. Nugent. Yes, sir. I would think to make it cleaner at this point, Cliff, and chime in, that Mike should probably withdraw the entire motion. I would concur with your suggestion, yes. <laughs> Be firm, <It's> removed. <laughs> That is removed. Now you can... Cliff, do they, have to, do they have to second the withdrawal or not? The, no. if the se who was the second? Who was the second? Uh, Staff? Mr. Gruneau, do you... Uh, you're okay you with the second withdrawal. His motion He's withdrawal. withdrawing his second okay. as well. All, all those in fa discussion about so it. Now, all those in favor of the motion, well, signify by well, there's no, no There's no motion now. It's been withdrawn. Right. Withdrawn. It's withdrawn. So now someone is free to make a new motion. Okay. And I will make that motion. Okay. Withdrawn. That it was withdrawn. That we award the contract of $17,127 to... Pool lift specialists. Motion and second it. Now discussion. No discussion. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Do we want to deal at all with the other issue? Or it's simply go out and we get electrical and we find out what it is? I suggest we table until we have more information. Electrical, okay. uh, no, put cost. John, can Matt just go out and get an electrician and ask him to come out here and, and do it? Uh, so. Preferably once we have the units on site. Okay, you have to have the yeah. units on site. So we approved it, so let, we don't really need another motion to deal with any of that until we get right. them on site, get an electrician, yeah. get more information. Is, is that understood? Uh, agreeable? So what happens if we have these three pieces of hardware and we don't like the electrician bid, we're still stuck with three pieces of hard, hardware? It doesn't matter. Well, uh, Mr. Coffey said he will come out there with his players and he'll get it in. I just think, we're, you know, again, I think between, we have 20, again, now we have 20, uh, 20 we have $26,000 we're working for with from the pre the original bid we were going to approve of 43 so I, I think we're making more of this than it really is going to end up being to be truthful are, are we done any other comments questions I'm not trying to get out of it okay thank you uh, building a renovations project change order number 14 did you yeah mr. chairman hopefully this is the last cleanup of this project um, change order 14, as um, the backup indicates, is a combination of three items that have already taken place. Um, one is a credit for damage to one of the pots out front. I'm going to scroll to the second page and blow it up a little so folks can see it better because I have it described better there. Um, there was a um, need for a revised disconnect to the dish table, $2,600, and an additional electrical relay box for the hood, $1,400, and the credit for the damage was $500. Therefore, um, it brings the total of this to $3,556.05. Um, I have administratively already approved these to get the work done. Um, rather than delay the project further than the billing department has, there's sufficient fund balance to cover this. Staff recommends com confirmation of my approval, so change order 14. Uh, is there a motion to accept staff's recommendation for the change orders? I think it's 14A, 14B, and 14C, an amount of $30,556.05. Move to accept staff recommendation. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Nugent seconds. Comments, questions? All those in favor of the motion, well, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm go ahead. I was curious, uh, how did this happen? It, with this, what happened? It was a, a problem, there was a, a damage caused here, it says. Yeah. Did they use the wrong relay box and it blew up on them, or what? The relay box, there was a relay box missing in the design, and the disconnect came about from the need to redesign the dish table. How does how does that come back to us? Isn't that we're the owner? Their problem? Didn't, didn't they design it wrong or whatever? I, the you know, the general contractor that. didn't design it. Um, 
you know, th this is on those catch 22s that this community dearly loves to kick around. Um, until you find perfect people to do a perfect design, uh, things like this That's happen. That's a design problem. Yeah. Great. Any other comments, questions? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, item 9D, lease agreement with uh, Brevard County Utility Services. Mr. Coffey. Yes, um, Mr. Henley, who is in charge of the shopping center and the back two spaces, um, Brevard County, which operates the, the water and sewer department, admin offices there, uh, lease expires uh, this Thursday. Um, both parties have agreed to uh, renew the current leasing um, for a five-year period with annual increases in base rent of 10 percent. Staff recommends approval. There's no, Cliff, there's no, no, this is not a resolution, correct? No, no. Okay, you've heard the recommendation. I was trying to find it on my computer. You've heard the recommendation uh, to uh, approve an a, of amendment, a renewal of lease agreement with Brevard County. Is there a motion to accept that recommendation? I'll accept Mr. it. Mr. Nugent, Mr. Morrissey seconded. Discussion, comments? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Thank you. Um, 21, are, are we going to do all the budget mentioned separately? We are, right? Yeah. There's a resolution for each one Mr. Reppinger could read. Uh, Cliff, could they bunch these as a group once you read the resolutions? I can read all the titles at one time. You can do them all if you like. Yeah, yeah I, I, I believe we have... Um, I would separate out... 9i because that's a, a different one but e through h would be fine to do as a group okay so and we've talked about these before e okay so for e ready so we're on e you want me to begin yeah go ahead please all right so this is for e uh, resolution 2021-19, a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Barefoot Bay Recreation District, amending resolution 2020-08, amending the budget for item G. Yes. Oh, wait, what are we doing wait, with F? Why didn't I? You know, we could have done, again, item E is the budget, is the change order 13 to the building A renovations project. F is the restroom trailer by Where pickleball tennis course, simply uh, amending the budget to pay for that. Why do I not have F? Uh, item G is an employee health and salary insurance plan savings that we approved at the last meeting, I believe it was. Correct? I just read you E. For 9H is the liability and workers' compensation the plan that we approved at the last meeting. Hold on a second. And again, for those at home, these are simply budget amendments as we amend the budget to pay for things we approved at previous meetings. Where, where, yeah. Do you have the page on there? Here. Here's F. F is 2021-20, a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Barefoot Bay Recreation District amending resolution 2020-08, amending the budget. You want to do G? No. Yes. G and H. G is 2021-17, a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Barefoot Bear Recreation District amending resolution 2021-09, amending the budget. And this is, this is H. And H, 2021-18, a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Barefoot Bay Recreation District amending resolution 2021-09, amending the budget. Just to summarize, um, the legalese requires us to read the uh, resolutions. The first two deal with projects that needed additional funding. The last two were savings from the insurance programs the board awarded previously. 
So, uh, again, I, I did not write down the uh, um, numbers. Steph, do you have the numbers themselves, resolution numbers? Just, just give me the numbers to write down first. For E, let's just do. Let's just give you the numbers for each one. For E, it's twenty twenty one nineteen. Twenty twenty one nineteen. For F, it's twenty twenty one twenty. Twenty. G is twenty twenty one seventeen. H is twenty twenty one eighteen. Twenty twenty one what? Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. You've heard the. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, you heard the uh, um, recommendations of staff, and you heard the resolutions. Uh, I would like a motion to approve resolution 2021-19, 2021-20, 2021-17, and 2021-18 as presented. So moved. Mr. Amos moved. Mr. Nugent seconded. The comments, questions, discussion. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion approved. Thank you. Thank you, Cliff. Uh, I is a separate one. You have uh, Mr. Coffey or Mr. Repiger? I'll describe it real quick. Um, this is for FY22. Um, and historically, um, as with anybody with our phones and stuff, technology changes over time and it just gets more complicated as time goes on. Um, years ago, uh, we had folks standing out in the audience videotaping. We did not live stream. Now we are live streaming multiple cameras. Um, I believe it would help streamline communications from Ms. Brown, who is ultimately responsible for the finished product, to the employee who does the behind the curtains work to make this all happen. Currently, the um, maintenance AV tech position is in property services. So this would take Mr. Getz out of the the feedback loop from the person responsible for the finished product to the person responsible for the uh, creation of the product. There is zero cost to the district. This is transferring $4,300 and .11 of an FTE from property services to the district clerk office. Staff recommends approval. Mr. Repinger, you have the resolution? Resolution 2021-15, a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Barefoot Bay Recreation District amending resolution 2021-09, amending the budget. Thank you, sir. Uh, you've heard staff recommendation and the resolution 2021-15. Is there a motion to approve both as presented? Mr. Morrissey, Mr. Seconded by Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Seconded by Mr. Gruno. Comments, questions? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, J B B O T meetings and quarterly town hall regular meeting schedule. I think you all have that in your packet. Um, John, anything we need to add? We need to pick some dates. Yeah, just one notification. Uh, we have moved the December meeting back to the second Friday. Previously, the last few years had been the first Friday because we were doing employee evaluations and increases based on a January 1 increase in the minimum wage. That has shifted to October 1 now, so we're moving that back to its traditional date. Uh, we put in the quarterly town hall meeting options. If the board could select one from each of the four op each of the three options, um, and then make a motion to approve the date so Ms. Brown can advertise them as one group to save us money. Thank you. Let's go to um, um, April. Uh, we have to choose one of those dates. Tuesdays are always good for me, but what's up to the board? Anyone, any objection to Tuesday uh, on the 19th at 7 to 9 p.m.? Okay, no objection? Okay, let's go to, uh, where are we now, July? I'm going to be fishing in July, so it's up to you. Need a date there, one date. What's that? What, uh, Thursday, which when? 20, the n I would prefer to have it earlier because I'm probably not going to be here later in the month. How about the 7th, Thursday the 7th? That would okay. be good. That would be good for me. Steph, Thursday the 7th, July 7th. And the last one is October uh, 2022. 
Uh, again, Tuesdays are the best days for me because I have very little going on on Tuesdays. It doesn't matter to me. And how about Tuesday, October 4, 2022? Okay, so we are looking at uh, approving the uh, uh, meeting schedule to regular BOT meetings and our quarterly town hall meetings. The first one would be uh, of this, on this approval of um, April 19, 2022 at 7 p.m. And then it would be July, 2020, July 7th, 2022 at 9, 9 a.m. And it would be October 4, 2022 at 7 p.m. I have a motion to approve that schedule. Mr. Amos made a motion. Is there a second by Mr. Nugent? Comments, questions, additions? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Manager's report. Mr. Coffey. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, that is the wrong one. Um, my apologies. I put the wrong one up. Um, <laughs> I'll find the resident relations. Oh, wait, I should have it on this computer. There we go. Um, ARC meeting on the 14th of September. One old business item. That's that one that is incomplete. Been it was tabled until the attorneys come to a resolution. Five consent items approved, four others were approved. ARC meeting today, nine consent items were approved, six others were approved. The next ARC meeting is October 12th, 9 a.m. in this building. The violations meeting, last Friday, 15 cases came into compliance prior to the meeting. One case, a homeowner is still working with staff towards voluntary compliance. Two cases were found in violation. As teased earlier, M Music Bingo starts in Building A, and I had this wrong. It's October the 11th, not next week. Bar will open at 4 p.m., and light meals will be available to purchase 4 to 7. Badges and guest passes are required. We'll be checking them at the door. Karaoke will move next week from Thursday to Tuesday, 5 to 10 p.m. Um, October is full of events. The German Club, Paradise Planners, and Food and Beverage are holding Oktoberfest. Um, this coming Saturday, uh, full day of events, uh, polka band from 1230 to 4, um, German beer, food, tickets and badges are not required. Uh, and then there's uh, music in the evening. October 16th, to color my world cancer free, come out and uh, support a big fundraiser. If you can't be there, Chairman Emeritus Klosky, CDO, and his friend Coconut are taking donations to support their walking. Um, and October 30th is the big Halloween bash, Lakeside. Um, there is a costume contest and uh, band from 7 to 1030. Um, first, Winter Beat Series. That's um, uh, concerts. Tickets will go on sale November 1st in Building A at 9 a.m. for the Simp Simply Tina, Tina Turner Tribute Band. That'll be on Saturday, January 15th. Tickets are $25. And Dueling Pianos will be on Jan January 29th. Tickets are $20. Um, property services have, has been busy as ever, um, keeping the walking path uh, working well, installing a new ice machine behind the bar in Building A, and making sure things are safe around the pools, replace flags at the veterans' flagpole. Work, uh, Mr. Getz is working with the veterans to reduce the number of flags on the flagpole. It's going to be a different um, display. All the flags will be up, but they won't all be on that pole that was designed for four flags. The, um, continue working on re, uh, the rehab of the men's room in this building. Once that's done, they'll switch over to the ladies' room. Extended the rope line along Haw Hawthorne Circle and um, prepped for the 9-11 services and continue to chase projects, getting ready for next year's projects. Golf membership renewal starts um, this Friday. Call the Pro Shop if you have any questions. And the Pro Shop will cease sales at noon on Thursday for their annual inventory that staff dearly loves and looks forward to each year. Um, a couple reminders, um, just not uh, political signs, but all snipe signs, that's like the typical yard sale signs, 
are not allowed on the medians in the middle of Barefoot Boulevard. This was something enacted by the board years ago for a safety uh, measure. Um, those who've been here a while, I see uh, Chairman Emeritus Kosky, CDO, and former Trustee Krauss out there will remember how uh, people almost died at the four corners because people would put their yard sales in the middle of the medians and folks would get out of their cars and walk in front of cars to read the little signs. So it is a safety issue. We will poll them if you put them there and take them to Falcon Drive. Uh, the RFP second meeting for the Lake Bank Evaluation Committee meeting for next Monday is canceled. That recommendation will be on the next meeting. The Building A Retaining Wall RFP Evaluation Committee meeting scheduled the next two Mondays, assuming we get proposals. And the one thing I'll just add that's not on here is uh, one of the things I try to encourage my staff is don't be afraid to try something new. Worst thing can happen, it doesn't work out. Well, Mr. Henley tried to simplify the budget amendments by breaking them out tonight into <laughs> specific ones. Uh, we won't do that again because it didn't work, but I applaud Mr. Henley for giving it the try. In theory, it sounded like it was going to work, but in practice was something else. Um, so that concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have questions, comments. Go ahead, Mr. Bruno. Um, does our social membership fee go up October 1? Okay. One Just time one. Assessment. one time, yeah. Yeah, the assessment, yeah. Just so people realize that. Uh, I have a couple questions, and uh, one of them talk about signs later in my report, but I'm going to back up, go backwards. Uh, the bullyard, bullard, how do you say it, bullards? I mean, are we going to go all the way end over there? Our, our plan was to go as as far as we needed to prevent bad behavior. And I mean, I get so many comments that people appreciate that we are doing that, yeah. and yet where we are now, then there's a car right on the other side of it. We're, prob we're probably going to have more I, I I would hope that we just go all the way to the end. I really would. I mean, it, it looks better. It looks really, it keeps the cars off there, and I get a lot of comments that we've done that. So I, I appreciate that. Number two, um, someone asked me the other day, why are we letting everybody into the October, um, October Fest? And the idea is we want more people to attend, correct? I mean, it's as simple as that. Okay. And um, three, uh, music bingo, starting, uh, someone else said they saw something, of course, on Facebook, which I don't know about. I don't go there, but that... We were going to have music bingo, but there wouldn't be anything to eat and no bar. I'm, I'm not sure where that all came from, but we want to clarify that when it does begin in Building A on October 11th, there is the light meal and the bar is open, correct? Good. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Repringer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll start with the good, positive stuff. Um, at the last meeting, you had referred um, a case to my office, a DR enforcement case at 750 Lark Drive. Um, that case, um, we were able to make contact with the, um, with the spouse of the individual who owns the property, who was living there. Um, and she was helpful in taking substantial steps toward resolving that violation. Um, the trailer that was on the there were numerous violations one was the big trailer one was the debris and one was the uh, uh the the grass and and weeds um the property was mowed um a substantial amount of the uh debris was either moved or removed and the trailer has been removed um i talked to staff last week there is still some there are still some issues that need to be resolved as far as compliance goes. It's not fully in compliance. There are some items that are underneath the carport that need to be removed. Um, and there are some items that are out in the yard such that the lot could not be fully mowed around those items. So they do need to be, uh, um, um, there needs to be a little bit of follow-up work done. Um, but the case has substantially come into or substantially taken steps toward coming into compliance from when it was referred at the last meeting. Um, I want I make you aware of that because um, we at this point in time we're not going to file a lawsuit on it. Um, we're going to allow that process to continue until it gets to a point that 
we realize that it's not going to comply, and then we would take action at that point. But right now, we don't we don't see a need um, to to move it into the legal posture in terms of filing a litigation case on it at this moment. Um, the and just as a little bit of background information to you, because the residents were raising the issue with you, um, the individual that was residing there. Um, and I don't want to go too far into the details about it, but is not currently um, at this moment residing in the property. At least he wasn't last week, and I don't believe that he was scheduled to come back this week. Um, um, but that is a temporary situation. And so I do believe that the individual will be returning to the residence at some point in time. He's not there now. Um, and that's as much as I can really say about that. So it, it is possible that either the violation could reoccur um, when the individual returns to the residence or that they, there could be additional problems or new problems that arise when, when that happens. Um, but for the here and now, it looks like we're actually making some progress as far as the compliance goes. Cliff, before you go on on that, mm -hmm. uh, again, perception is everything. And, and I, I agree with you from the, the changes that were made over there after our last meeting, you know, again, the perception of people is, wow, they really got tough and they got this thing going and, and a lot of things are happening, which is good. That's what we want people to know and understand. Um, so I, I applaud whatever you've done or whatever we've done as staff to make sure that this thing does get handled because there are a whole lot of changes there from yeah. when we filed this thing. Well, and the... the, the the, me the, the lesson in it is, if there is a lesson, is that there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, right? So communication is a big deal in these cases. Um, and from the legal end, you, you can have an impact without necessarily filing a lawsuit. Um, so, um, you know, there's not a one-size-fits-all way of resolving these cases, I guess, is the bottom line. And sometimes if you can, if you can make contact with the right people and they're receptive, um, and they're willing to work with you. Um, there are ways around it that you can. That you, of course, you're only as good as uh, the respondents who are willing to work with you. So, um, but but it seems like in this case we're we're we've made an impact. Um, so that being said, on that case, um, the local bill um, sponsored by uh, Representative Fine is scheduled for its um, uh, Brevard delegation meeting tomorrow. Um, I have sent you out an email on that. There is a link in the email that I believe is a link to the YouTube channel for Space Coast Government Television. I believe that when that meeting goes live, you'll be able to watch that meeting um, on via that link. I'm not sure whether there's a live simulcast on um, Spectrum Cable or whatever cable um, carrier or service provider people have um, that they can watch Space Coast Government Television on. Um, but I think the YouTube link um, should work. So for those, well, no one's, for those in the audience that can hear me that are interested in this, um, or anybody watching on simulcast, you can, um, you, you can YouTube, or you can Google uh, Space Coast Government Television Brevard delegation meeting, and you can watch that uh, delegation meeting on the YouTube link. Um, the the item, our item, the local bill item, is the first item under local bills. And so the meeting begins at 3 o'clock. There are a few agenda items that will precede the local bills, but this will be the first item under local bills. That probably will happen at around no greater than, uh, or no, no uh, 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 within, I expect, uh, uh, 30 minutes of the meeting starting, so probably not later than 3.30. Um, our item will come up. Uh, Mr. Grunow and I will, are planning to be in attendance. Um, there is not, because it is already a sponsored bill, um, there was not a need to have us listed as official public speakers. Um, so we are not necessarily listed as giving a presentation. There are other government entities on that agenda that actually give presentations. Um, we are not listed, but we will be there in case the delegation has any questions of us. Um, if the fact that we're not giving a formal presentation um, changes your opinion as to whether we should be there or not, um, you can let me know. But um, I think it's probably a good idea at this point to just see it through and, and have us there in case there are any um, questions that are raised. So. I definitely think you have to be there. Uh, I don't think there's any question about that. Um, on the other hand, if you look at that agenda, 
I don't think you should be there for the whole meeting because no. you won't be back to our meeting in two weeks. I mean, that is no, the longest no, no. agenda I've ever seen. Yeah. I, I, if they're all going to speak, you're lucky you're up first. It's a, that is a long agenda. It is a long agenda. Um, those meetings, ten, I've been at those meetings. They, um, they, they, they have an, uh, a designated time slot. So I believe the meeting is scheduled from 3, I want to say, until 7. So it's a four-hour block. Those speakers are in, um, it's something, if, if you're interested in limited public comment and how government entities limit public comment, watch that meeting um, because they are very strict time frames that they adhere to. Um, they do not deviate from them and they stay on schedule. And so um, they, they, there's not a lot of room for uh, getting into a, a significant or substantial dialogue about things that um, are, could go astray. So they stay very focused on the agenda. Um, but, but to your point, uh, once that item is completed, I don't. Yeah, I was spend, making a joke, but I've never Mr. seen Mr. Grunow like is that. is yeah. is is uh, welcome to stay and watch the yeah. entire proceedings, okay. but um, <laughs> but the meter will stop at that point for me. Um, so that's uh, those are those two items. Um, everybody's favorite topic: the uh, the beach restrooms. Um, there are there are. Uh, Friday is the deadline for the next agenda, and that's a week out. Um, so we're only 10 days literally away from the next agenda, and I'm just going to ask that you um, allow me the courtesy of continuing my dialogue with the county until that meeting. Um, I think I will have, well, hopefully have an answer. If I have one by the agenda deadline, I will let you know. That's my goal. Um, but I don't have it right now with me tonight, so I can't give you that. But um, hopefully within the by the time we next meet, which will not be very long, I will have a response for you. Um, and that is all I have for this evening. Thank you, sir. Questions, comments for Mr. Repetor? Um What's next? Trustee remarks. Uh, Mr. Nugent. Mr. Gruno. have a little bit of announcement. We had a lot of folks approach the American Legion about the Veterans Day ceremony. And the first part was how much everybody likes it under the oaks, and they like being out there in their golf carts. So, again, Veterans Day this year is going to be under the oaks, weather permitting. The second request we had was that many of the golf cart owners wanted to decorate their carts and didn't see that one coming. So the American Legion decided that we're going to sponsor three prizes, $100, $75, $50, and encourage the residents to decorate their carts that day. And just to let you know, Chairman Americus Emeritus Klosky is going to be head of the judging team. Thank you. Mr. Morrissey. Uh, yeah, I don't have, I have my old problem again with uh, drivers in the bay, the speeders. It's getting worse. It's not getting any better. And I hope that we have a date soon when uh, Bavard County is going to come out and have a survey. Any good news, uh, John? Anything else? No, nothing yet. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. It's probably so. We're way down on the list, if I understand it correctly. Or you have a list, and I mean, we're probably pretty far down. I would think. When we submitted, we were told six to eight months. I'll have to check when that was. Mr. Amos. Yeah, I'd just like to thank everybody for being here. That's it. Thank you, sir. The only thing I have is, and it goes back to, and I. This is not political, but we talk about signs where you can't post them. And if any of you go on Facebook, you'll notice that my wife went on Facebook and my wife is upset because we have our signs out for elections, etc. And as of today, nine of mine have been taken down. And today, Rich Armington found one thrown in the canal. <laughs> and uh, people took them and made yard, a garage sale signs out of them. Yeah. And I've been put. I've been putting them back up when I find them. And and, down. and after I, my wife put an email out or a Facebook thing, talking about this, and it went right down to order. And two were the garage sale. One was in the pond. One was this, and still missing six. So it's unfortunate that 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 people, whether they like you or dislike you, or if they think for some reason you're not going to get elected because you don't have a sign somewhere, that they would do that. But I just bring it up because we did mention no signs in the middle. Um, of the boulevard, etc. But that's all I have. Uh, can we have a motion to adjourn? Motion. We, let's take an approval, Bruce. He said, you just get a motion to approve and we never, is there a second? I'll second. 
Okay, motion is there approval? Let's, all those in favor signify by saying aye. The motion carried, thank you. Never.